what I've done is start to set up an elevation. What we're going to be doing in this session is having a look at hatching. The simplest way to hatch is to hatch whole areas there. So what I'm going to do is switch off my construction setup now. So here we've got the elevation. Now the first thing I want to do is set up myself a hatch layer and I'm going to make it a very thin line because you don't want your hatching to stand out ahead of your other lines in the drawing. We haven't used the hatch command before and when we do it opens up another new ribbon. So if I click on hatch here the command line's asking for an internal point. We'll start by doing some brickwork. So if I click in this space here, it's picked up this area. And you can see the ribbon has completely changed. What I need to find is a hatch pattern that matches brickwork. It needs to be standard UK bricks. That one looks quite good. A bit enormous, but it's a nice brick pattern. Those bricks look as though they're the same in height as they are along. Let's try brick standard. They look more bricky bricks. I'm going to measure one of these bricks, make sure it's the right size. So let's do a measure. That, there. 204. They're slightly small then. Do another measure of the height. 69. So again, slightly small. Escape that. Highlight our hatch and we need to make it a bit bigger till we get to about where we want to be. We need to get from 69 to 75, so yeah, one, one probably. We can set the origin of our hatch. Set it just there, you can see it's all lined up. Let's close the hatch editor and we'll do just another measure of one of these bricks. See how we're doing for size. 223, that's close enough for me. Um, that's as near as we could possibly get to being the right size. So nice accurate bricks. So for my next bit of brickwork, I want to put it in the porch. I'm going to do it separately from this bit. If I click on hatch now, again it's asking me to choose an internal point, so I'll click there and I need to make this 1.1 so that it matches. Set the origin as the corner here. We'll enter to confirm that. But now what I'm going to do is click on this. I'm going to make the line type even thinner so that it drops even further into the background because I want the porch to look deeper than this wall here. If I'd left my construction line switched on, what I would have needed to do to do this hatching is choose each of the little individual squares and shapes that make up the space. Now what I've got here is horizontal boarding in this area and then around this window and running up into the eaves I've got some rendering. So now I'm going to do my timber boarding. If I go to hatch again, pick internal point, I'll pick just there. It's come up with a brick but we won't worry about that. What we need to do is find a horizontal line like that. Mm, very helpful. First we need to make it much further apart. So if I just hold down the arrow here until I get something that looks about right I can check it later. I don't want my boarding diagonally at 45 degrees so what I need to do then is change the angle Oh, nice vertical-ish, until we get to a horizontal. And that wants to be actually at 135, which is 90 plus 45. So that's looking OK, isn't it? All I need to do now is put a bit of dot in here because this, this part is rendered. So we'll go back to our hatch again, pick an internal point, and we need a dotted pattern. Just carry on going through. Oh, there we go, sand. That'll do. That looks a bit sparse on the um, sand front, so we'll just zoom back in until we get a slightly denser dot. Because we only need to give an impression of render. Looks alright, doesn't it? So now we've got our different hatch patterns appearing in our elevation. And that just gives you a bit of a flavour of some of the stuff we can ho do with hatching. The last thing I've done here is use hatch patterns to explore what this whole elevation might look like and look at some different alternatives. It does give you a sort of sense of the way you can relatively quickly, using copying and pasting and a very small amount of fiddling, get an idea of what these things are going to look like. The last thing I'll do, if I delete the render from this one, go back to my hatch, pick a space to hatch, that's absolutely fine, that's the right pattern. So I can confirm that and then go back to hatch again to do this bit and it's come up with the wrong pattern but it's picked the right space. If you look, the hatch ribbons automatically come up. If I go to match properties now, all I need to do is find a bit of hatch that I want it to match to, and you can see that that's now changed to the hatch I want, so we'll confirm that. So those are my various options. You would be able to just try things out for yourself and see what you think is going to work best for you. The last thing we're going to do in the way of hatching is to add some construction hatching to show the construction detail in a drawing. Now. I've got a part of the drawing here, a corner where I've actually drawn some external walls. These are in a layer which I've called component masonry. I'm keeping all my component layers together and masonry 
is a useful term to describe brickwork, blockwork and anything like that. So what I want to do, if I escape that, is hatch to show what the materials are that I'm using here. I've got a brickwork outer leaf, insulation in the middle, and there will be another video about insulation shortly, and a blockwork inner leaf. And I've drawn these with closed polylines because that's going to make my life easier in a couple of minutes' time. You can see I've got my layer list up here, my layer properties, and I've created myself a bunch of component layers. So we've got insulation, masonry, membranes, that's for things like damp roof membranes, roofing underlays, DPCs and that kind of thing. Plaster, tiling, timber sections, and there's my construction setup layer. Before we go any further, we need to make sure we're in the right hatch layer. And I've got two hatching layers. I've got one for components and one for, the, for design hatch. If I switch on the design hatch, you'll be able to see lots of coloured stuff, and there'll be another video about things you can do with that. But I'm going to turn that back off again because I don't want to see it at the moment because we're going to look at some hatching for construction. I now need to click on the hatch button here. That opens me up the hatching ribbon. Brickwork is designated by a double diagonal line so that would be this one here. I'll click on that and then I can either click in a space or if I go to select I can select a boundary edge to put my hatch in. What I don't know is why I can't see it. To be perfectly honest, I've got no clear idea what's going on. All of my hatching seems to want to be in the design hatch layer and it's very difficult to see it with the design hatch layer turned on. I'm going to create the hatch I want to do. In theory, my component hatching for components layer is still current and then I'll simply change the layer. So, let's go to the hatch command. I need this pattern for brickwork. I'm going to choose my um, hatch location by selecting the object. So I'm going to choose select just there and click on the outside of my brick wall and now increase the scale of that so that it looks right in the drawing and then I'm done. Now if I go up to hatch again you can see it automatically comes up with the same hatch pattern but this time I want a crisscross because that's what block work looks like. So I'll use this one and I'll go for select objects again. You can see we've got a crisscross pattern but it's very very dense so we'll open that up quite a lot more. I'm going to set the origin at the corner, not really necessary but it does look tidier. So now we've got our brickwork and our block work and that's finished so I can close the hatch creation ribbon and now what I'm going to do with these two bits of hatching is put them into the layers that they were meant to be in in the first place. But for some reason AutoCAD's decided it won't play. So now, if I switch off my design hatch layer, I've got my wall nicely hatched. If I switch off my component hatch and switch on the design hatch and also switch off my masonry layer and the insulation, I've got a design drawing. So what I'm doing is building up progressively um, a drawing that'll do lots and lots of different jobs. Let's see what that means in, in viewports. This is my A1 landscape viewport. If I just copy that viewport, I'll do. what I'm going to do is alter the outside edge of it. So I'll just bring it down to there. And in this viewport, if I double click inside it, I can start to switch off some layers. So I'm going to switch on my component hatching. I'm going to freeze out the design hatching in this viewport. I'm going to freeze out all of the design walls layer. I'll leave in the stairs and the doors and things. I would freeze out the furniture if it's going to be a working drawing. I might freeze out a particular text style if that was appropriate. And I'm going to switch on my masonry layer, make sure all of those are on, all my constructions on. I'll freeze out the construction setup so it's not getting in the way. What we can see here now, if I double click out of it, is that we've got a construction drawing developing with the construction information that would be needed to actually show a builder how to build. Thanks very much for watching this one. The next video is going to be about using coloured hatches and there's lots of exciting stuff we can do there. And um, I'm also going to do a very short one on the batting line type and how we can make insulation come out the right scale. Cheerio, see you again soon.